Hi hi guys, I'm Ime and welcome to my channel. First off, I'd like to apologize for my sound quality. I don't really have a mic set up right now. But yeah, this video is going to be about the types of eyes you can draw up for your character and also how to use them with expressions. Okay, to start off, I'm going to start with some basic shapes and explore certain eye types for the certain shape I'll be drawing first. So here we've got a circle and I'll be drawing some eyes here that will kind of maintain the shape but I will distort it to give certain characteristic and personalities to the eyes. So I'm gonna start off with this default one here. And the one thing you might have to remember when you draw certain eyes depending on the shapes is that you can always distort the shape and by distort I mean you can stretch it and squash it and maybe angle it and tip it to the front a bit or tip it to the back or drag it down a bit more it's all about distorting the shape you don't have to always keep the primitive form of the shape you can always play around with it so circular eyes usually give off a very pure innocent feel and if you notice, a lot of protagonist characters have this type of eye where it's very circular and bright and energetic. So that's the characteristic usually that we link with circular eyes. So if you have a character who's, you know, more pure and the pure side, a bit childish, I would recommend some circular eyes um, to kind of give off that feeling. All right. Then we'll move on to the next shape, which is a semicircle. And usually semicircles are mainly drawn characters who have a very steady, mature, or very tired, or a very I don't really care about what's happening around me type. So it's really up to you to choose which character trait to emphasize through the eyes. So the first is the more I'm so tired, that kind of personality. Um, when you see this eye shape, this is the first eye I usually think about, so I drew that one up. And you can still kind of come up with different eye types of this kind of shape too. So the next one, I'm giving it a more steadier feel, a more mature feel, a less extremely stylized feel where it looks like this character might be very tired because there's like eye bags on the bottom right and he looks extremely tired. So if you notice the third one, I've given it a bit of a backward tilt. So it's a bit of a saggy eye. And I did this to give off a more sad kind of feel you know those characters will always have those sad eyes like it looks like they're about to cry 24 7 and i gave him like some like vet eyelashes you see this kind of eyelashes in certain art styles where it looks like it's a very wet style so it's always fun to experiment with your eyes just to see what kind of eyes you might like and what kind of eyes you might create so the next one is one of my personal favorites it's the triangle I almost always default to this eye type. In this one, you can see me distort the shape a lot, which I will show you. So the first one I'm drawing is pretty steady. It's pretty default from my usual eye styles that I go for. And it's quite similar to the circular shape if you look at it, but the only difference you might notice is that the base is always a straight line and the top is a bit more pinched. It's like pulled up a bit to give that triangle shape. So this triangular shape is usually affiliated with a lot of bad characters uh, when it comes to like animation slash design um, because of the sharp edges it gives out. But right now, of the eye type I've drawn, it seems a lot more innocent and energetic, quite similar to the circular eyes characteristics. But in this one, I've decided to give it that energetic feel 
And in the next one, I decided to distort the shape. In the sense, I decided to pull the shape from the right and elongate it a lot. So this is more of a serious eye type for a serious character, maybe. And then I decided to kind of use the same shape and give my signature eyelash, which I always love to give my characters, a little wing, but I make it straight so it's sharper to give off a more evil villainous kind of style. It looks like the type of eye you'd see on a very beautiful character who is ready to kind of bring chaos into the world. So it's sharper, it's more deadly, it's more vicious compared to the second eye type I drew which is a bit more steady, it looks like this dude might be in a very serious situation whereas the last type looks like he's about to commit some crimes. So the next and the final shape I'll be kind of exploring right now for this tutorial would be the diamond shape. And this is the shape you usually draw up to draw a realistic eye, which I'll sketch out the gist of it here. Something like this. And I also decided to do a more stylized version of something I'll draw from a similar shape, which is this tight looking eye with a half lid, as in it's a bit closed. So yeah. These are basically the eye types you can draw and you always have to make sure to have fun with it. That's the whole point of it. Eyes can really give sort of window to the character without really introducing the character. You can kind of tell what type of character this person might be. And it's also important to not always have the same eye drawn across multiple characters. That's one of the reasons why the same face syndrome actually happens to artists. So. Just have fun, just explore, just distort the shapes. That's all you gotta do, just distort the shapes and you'll come up with various styles. So here you can see I've used the semicircle, but I have decided to soften the edges a bit. And here I've distorted the triangle and elongated it, whereas for the first one, I've kind of pinched it higher. So yeah try to make sure that it follows the basic anatomy of an eye and you can play around with it. So let's move on to the next part of this tutorial. Okay, so we're at the second part of the tutorial where I'm going to show you how to color some eyes. Okay, so for this coloring tutorial, I basically use the default turnip pen and the soft brush pen, which is also a default pen. And I'm not sure about this uh, one, which is the round blending brush. I don't know if I downloaded it from the Clip Studio shop, but that's also the other brush I use to color in the eyes. So I started off with the white base and then I colored in the pupil and I top it off with darker tones for the iris and then I use a bit of a black to give off more depth. And you can see I'm using a very light blue to give it a more energetic feel because that's what I had in mind for the character. And then I'm gonna go in with the turnip pen and give in the white spots on the eyes which actually makes the eye feel more alive. And then I open up another new layer and put it on multiply and give it a bit of a shade um, which is right at the bottom of the eyelid. It's not always white, depending on the mood and the light and the environment. So um, I decided to go with the gray. And then I open up another new layer and put it on overlay to pop up some color on the eye. And then I finish off with some shadows on the skin.
So this is one of the default ways I color my eyes. And then moving on to the triangle shape. Um, in these, I'm going to start off just coloring and then adding the gray shadow underneath the eye. And in this one, you can see I used a bit of a very desaturated brown. And then usually for these eyes, I don't really think about the color combinations. I usually have fun with it. I decided to go with a purple and pink this time, which is playing it safe. But I usually go with another extremely contrasting color just for the fun of it. And for the iris, I kind of play around with it again. Uh, you can add a triangle heart, which is super cute. Uh, but since I'm obsessed with stars, I'm going to add a star. So just for consistency's sake, I'm going to color the top of the star and give it a darker green to complement with the purple line. And then I'm just going to add a lot of sparkles to give the kira kira feel. I like it. I use the light pink and a yellow and drew up tiny stars and circles around the pupil and then i top it off with the white again and overlay just fixing up the eye a bit and shadows and i decided to play around again and just added some sparkles on the eyelids too so yeah these are the two ways i can color eyes you can always you know do your own way this is just how i do it it's how i color certain eye types depending on my mood and the character and the illustration i'm doing so we'll move on to the last part of the tutorial which is going to be expressions and i'm excited for that All right, so now that we've explored some fun eye types, I want to show you guys how to use them for expressions. For this, I'm going to be using my original character, Ago. Okay, so as you can see, Ago's eyes are very circular, they're round. So what we're going to do is we're going to distort the shape once again according to the expression, so it's mostly stretching and squashing. So here I've got a bunch of expressions I did as studies, and you can see that all these expressions, especially for the eye, are derived from the primitive circle. So let me show you how I go through this process. So there's four emotions here, and let's start off with the first one, which is happiness or glee. So in this one, you can see that the eye, the furthest eye is wide and open. It shows that he's very attentive towards what he's looking at, he's excited. And then just to not make the expression seem very stale and stiff, I decided to make the other eye a half circle because of how pushed up it is with the mouth moving upwards. It makes it more dynamic, it makes it more fun, it makes it more boyish. And what I do is, once I draw the basic shapes at the bottom, I kind of draw the character's eye style on top of it. Moving on to the next one with a shock, a sort of negative shock betrayal surprise. I have not only stretched the eyes, you can see I've stretched the face. And then I just stretched the eyes and I've tilted it downwards to emphasize that stretch. So one thing you have to remember is that the eyes don't do all the work for the expressions. It's a full feature thing. So the eyebrows really make a difference and then the mouth also makes a difference. So if I take this layer off, the kind of sketch layer, it also still looks like the sort of expression you'd use when you're shocked or betrayed. So putting it back in, draw out the eyes again. And to kind of show you how important the eyebrows are, you can see me changing it here from the default void to like a hmm, like a judgy kind of expression. And then I make it into an angry expression. So this is by still keeping the eyes and the mouth 
without erasing or editing that part but just the eyebrows so you can see how important the eyebrows are so make sure to always use the other features of the face to give off the maximum effect for your expressions and the next one is a more guarded look an angry guarded look i decided to give a semicircle to show that he's very closed off and then i topped it off with his eyebrows kind of laying heavily on top of his eyes to give it a bit of a you know frown a guarded frown i will also squash the face along with it just to give more emphasis on the eyes and the last one is basically anguish and for this one i've used his body language too to kind of move away from the other person or move away from whatever is kind of making him feel this way and I've squashed the face a lot so much so that he's getting nose wrinkles at this point you don't always have to keep a character's eyes open to show the emotion off closing it off also has its own kind of storytelling so here I decided to close his eyes to not only emphasize and show his anguish but also to show that he's closed off from the world and from everything around him and he's so kind of concentrated on his sadness. Every expression is not the same. You should always think about your character's personality before you think about the expression and see, okay, so this is how I'd react to this situation, but how they react to this situation. You know, I, I don't express happiness the same way, for example, Argo expresses happiness and his story and his, you know, whole backstory kind of feeds into his expressions and how he reacts to certain things. So it's always important to remember these things and then design your expression accordingly. So there's no sure way to say, hey, you know, happiness, this is the default expression of happiness. It's all about exploring it just working through it and trying to kind of give the audience and make it very readable for the audience so that even without dialogue your character can still read clearly to them. All right, all right. We're finally at the end of the video and if you've sticked around till this point, thank you so much. And I hope this video has really become an eye opener for some of you guys. And yep, pun intended, and I will see myself out. Bye!